Hey guys, welcome back. If you're new to the channel, welcome for the first time. I know I haven't been able to put out as many videos as often because of the inventory shortages, but if you can't tell by the seats, we're sitting in my favorite truck. Today we're going to go over the 2022 Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road. Alright, so finally another truck video guys. I'm super excited because I love the Tacoma Off-Road and if you're new to the channel, I actually own a Tacoma Off-Road. I have a 2021 in Army Green and I love it. And I haven't done an actual video breaking down this truck uh, in a non-biased way. So today that's what we're going to do. So we're going to start with the outside of this truck. We're going to pop the hood and talk about the engine and powertrain. Then we're going to get inside and talk about the way it drives. Let's begin. So you can tell you're walking up on a Tacoma because it has that very unique look in the front. It almost has a face like it's smirking at you. And depending on the Tacoma that you get, when you work your way to the headlights, which is my favorite place to begin, you'll either have a JLED here, which you can see on the bottom, or if you have the LED upgrade package, there'll actually be a full, I call it wishbone LED with no projector, and it'll be all reflector lights on the inside like my truck. And then down below with the LED package, instead of this yellow fog light, you'll actually have an LED matching fog light. To me personally, either way is great. I think the little, I call them the teardrop LEDs. I think they give it a unique personality. And in a way, with this style of headlight, it gives it a little bit more of that rugged truck look. Whereas when you go with the full LED headlights, it looks a little bit more modern and robotic. Either way wins for me. The one that I got personally had those and I was happy with it. But you can always run upgraded bulbs here as well. It has that nice pronounced cheek in the front here and on the hood you have that traditional hump here no hood scoop on the off-road you would get the hood scoop on the pro or the sport which is a non-functioning hood scoop but you have some of those muscle lines without it being too dramatic and that's the thing about the tacoma it has the body lines and the cuts without all the drama and that's what i personally love is i like the lack of drama the tacoma is not all about the drama Moving on to the wheel, with the off-road edition, you're actually gonna have a smaller wheel than the Sport. This is a 16 inch rim. It's gonna be machine finished on the outside here with a nice silver. And then you have a magnetic gray metallic with a gloss finish and a fatter tire here. Coming from the factory, we have the Goodyear Wranglers. Uh, new for 2022, they put some of the tread on the sides. Doesn't really do a whole lot unless you air way down, but it gives it a very cool look. Uh, yes, there are a lot more aggressive tires out there that function better, but from the from the factory out of the box, this is great for commuting and hitting some gravel trails, maybe some light rock crawling, which is what I tend to do. What separates the off-road as well compared to the Sport or SR5 is, past the wheel, you have a softer Bilstein suspension here, which is going to handle the off-roading, the gravel, the potholes, the cracks and crevices a lot better than that typical SR5 suspension. You know, when you put it through the paces and it's gonna be more forgiving on those potholes, etc., than on the Sport. And you're also getting a eighth inch thick steel skid plate here with access for oil changes. Or no, I'm sorry, without the access, but if you upgrade to the quarter inch steel, which will be that silver color, the TRD skid plate, that will give you the access door for the oil changes, which a lot of people like to eventually do even though they're quite pricey. As far as the exterior appearance, once you get to know these trucks, you'll tell it's actually an off-road right away because you have the non-painted fender flares, as well as the non-painted flare here on the front. And before we go all the way down the side, I like that they kept the same grill as the 2021 which was an upgrade from the 20s. You have this wavy, almost like a honeycomb design, but it's a tougher look than the last generation. Well, not generation, the last refresh. It's not polished, it's not chrome. A lot of the truck guys aren't into the chrome. It's a flat sparkly dark gray, which is great. And you have your Toyota sensor behind the badge right there. But coming onto the side, I'm gonna step back a notch. And like I said before, you have the no drama body design, no sharp edges that are not needed. It's not designed to look like a very fast truck because it's not, and it doesn't, you know, it's not trying to look like something that it actually isn't. 
but it's great to see color matching mirrors on these trucks standard with a turn signal and they fold very easily you can't go wrong with silver because it gives it a little bit of a classy look but it hides the scratches and dents better than a lot of the darker colors something popular that a lot of the truck people are doing is they're actually doing the emblem overlays on top of the badges here which i that's actually the first thing i did on mine and the mud flaps are a little on the stiff side so that was the second thing i did to my tacoma when i got it and going off-roading i've actually rubbed the bottom of these and it makes me fear that they might snap and start ripping at some of these bolts here so depending on what level i want to get to which isn't going to be crazy i may actually take these out and get something a little bit more pliable and soft but since we're talking about the body it's a c-channel frame Some of them come from the factory with the running boards. Some of them don't. There are plenty of styles. My running boards are actually not Toyota factory, but Toyota makes great running boards. And you can see that nice blue giving away the Bilstein shocks back here. And also not standard, but this one has the Toyota exhaust tip which gives it a little bit more of a cleaned up sporty look from the outside. This is a base level off-road, which means it doesn't have either of the two packages available. With the advanced technology package, the bumper corners would actually be color matching and you would have the little round sensors for the parking sonar that beeps as you get closer to things. Many of the people that get the base off-roads in sports, they actually go and buy, or even the SR5s, they go and buy a replacement that's gonna match their truck. A lot of them do the steel ones for the off-roaders, or they'll even just do like a flat black. To me, the chrome's not that bad. It gives it a little bit of that country look that the SR5 has. Of course, standard is the tow package on these trucks. So you're around 6,400 pounds with the V6 4x4. With your 4 and 7 pin. Let's go inside the bed. Not electronic locking, there is an upgrade for that. So you'll have to do the slide out key from the key fob because it is a push button starter, but a fully composite bed. So this is actually not a plastic cap or cover on top of a metal bed. The bed is made out of composite and Toyota was very happy with this and successful. So this fully composite bed is actually on the new 2022 Tundra. Here you have a little bit of storage. Be advised, this is not waterproof. In fact, you can see right down below. So I put some bungee cords and a microfiber to check my oil, which I do every time I gas up. Tell me, am I crazy for doing that? I just like to make sure my fluids are good. Your three prong charger here. And these little uh, rectangles, if you undo a couple 10 millimeters, you can pop your taillight out. You can add your aftermarket genuine Toyota or aftermarket bed light. Pop your taillight back in and put on your 10 millimeters again, and you will have one, two, three bed lights, which if you have the tonneau cover that a lot of the truck people do, that won't light up the bed, but these two will. And that was the best money I spent. You can get the kit for under $100. It's totally plug and play. There's actually a little dummy plug inside the back of the taillight waiting for you. So whenever that's active, the inside ones are active and it makes a world's difference. And you have your swiveling D-ring here, stationary D-rings there. And then a lot of the trucks come with cleats, they'll have two on each side that will loosen up and slide around for custom anchoring for whatever kind of stuff you're gonna be transporting. For the last couple of years, Toyota's moved on to a Alteza style taillight, which I'll go to the other side for better lighting purposes. So instead of a red lens, like you have on the SR5, and instead of the black plastic, like you have on the Pro, you have a slightly smoked silver, not a full dark gray or gunmetal gray, with an Alteza chrome lip here, that's gonna really catch the light and add a bit of pop to the truck. I see a lot of Tacoma people swap these out right away, and I thought about doing it, but 
since I decided not to, I'm growing to like that little bit of chrome you have here. And since it's a clear lens, it gives it this three-dimensional look that the SR5 just doesn't have. To me, it's fine. But of course, there's options for replacement if you choose to do so. The turn signal will be a red turn signal here with the reverse light. And then your brake light is just a small red L here. But this angle really shows how nice the non-painted fender flares that are going to take the gravel and the mud and the rocks and the salt very well compared to a painted surface like on the Sport. They're still giving you a non-locking gas cap. Let's hear your opinion on that. A lot of people don't care about it, myself personally. Not really worried about gas theft or vandalism, but I would imagine if you're worried about that, you'll probably want to look into options for this. However, upon doing some research, there are not a lot of options for this that are not cheap. And if you put something low quality in there for a locking cap, you do risk harming the EVAP system. So do your research. And here's indirect light on the silver. I like silver, it blends in. I've always loved silver, but I had to get something different when I got mine, which is why I got the army green. Up top, shark fin antenna, keeping it simple, dead center. And yeah, I mean, what else, what else can you say in, in 10 minutes? You know, it's, it's that truck design that you see a lot of other trucks out there being based off of. And now Chevy has the Colorado redesign out. Nissan has come out with the new Frontier design. Ford with the Ranger. But we know who the top dog is. You know, when it comes to reliability and safety. And when I say durability, I really mean it. Go around the globe and look at what people choose for that truck that just has to take a beating and write down below what truck they choose because you're looking at it in case you didn't realize what it was. But I think that's enough on the exterior. Let's pop the hood, talk about the engine and powertrain, and then work our way inside. The Tacomas have one big heavy hood without struts, so you're definitely using a little bit of muscle getting it up, and you have this good old reliable giant metal toothpick that comes up and holds up the hood for you. And though a lot of people like to hate on the fact that this truck doesn't have hood struts because all the luxury cars have it and now it's becoming a standard thing, I personally prefer this little guy here because it'll never let me down. It's super cheap to replace if I screw it up. And those hood struts on this very heavy hood eventually will fail and I do not want my head to be in there on the day that they do. That being said, with the off-roads, standard is the 2GR FKS 3.5 liter six cylinder. And Toyota's moved on from the 4.0 that the 4Runner has to the 3.5. And like I've mentioned in other Tacoma videos, the Tacoma's kind of the testing hamster for the trucks compared to the 4Runner that Toyota's trying to keep tried and true to its heritage and old and dinosaurish. The Tacoma's the one that gets the experiments with the new technology, safety, and of course, new engines for the efficiency. So they started the 3.5 in 2016. The transmission shifted a little weird. Um, so they fixed that after I think like a year and a half, they did a flash. And by the time you get to 2018, the transmission started shifting a lot better. They had a very low shift point that some people didn't like. A lot of people didn't even notice, but it's definitely a different feel. It doesn't have that instant um, downshift action that the 4.0 has. But the cool thing about this engine is it has artificial intelligence. So as you drive the truck, it learns the way you drive and it changes the way it shifts and drives over time. And me personally, after a few thousand miles, I did notice some changes and my truck got a lot better, which I will discuss in my soon to come off-road Tacoma review, which I have my first one and my second one's on the way. So yeah, here's what it looks like. Simple design. This is just a dust cover, dust cover here. Battery's easy to get to and pull out when it's time. The bulbs are super easy to get to, to do at home when you get your replacement bulbs. You just twist them and pop them out. It's very easy to check my fluid levels. There's my brake fluid. Just peering around, I can check my coolant. The power steering has a hot and cold level, which is nice. You can see just by peering down there and a huge jug for the washer fluid which is great because when you're going dusty dirty muddy places you don't want a rinky dinky little reservoir for your washer fluid you want a giant gallon so this thing will last you and you can just spray and spray and spray and clean off the windshield awesome for this 
Changing the air filter at home if you want to is easy to do. You just unclip this and that pops out. But with the six speed transmission on the automatic, I would rate the engine a A, not an A plus. Could use a dot more power. We're still slightly under 300. And for the transmission, I would rate a B because when I first got it, it was a C plus, but since it learned the way I drive, it got a little smoother. The only reason I rate them this is because the Forerunner is that much smoother. I mean, that thing has to get up and go, but here's the catch. This engine, if you take care of it and you go easy on it, I have pulled computer calculated, 27 miles per gallon, 24 miles per gallon, I'm getting daily 20 to 22. The sticker says 18 to 22. Those are real numbers, whereas the Forerunner, they're fighting for 16 to 18. And when gas is 450 a gallon, 515 a gallon, or whatever it is, I don't care what your budget is, that's real money that you could be saving. And yes, there will be people that say, oh, well, it's a truck, you don't need to worry about the gas mileage. But for many people, this is a tool doing a job. And if you can save $200 a month, that's $200 a month that can go somewhere important. So it's a good setup. If you could put the 4.0 back in there and keep the same mileage, of course, everybody would take it. But I'm not gonna go on a rant about the engine and powertrain. The 4x4 system, we will discuss once we sit in the truck, but just to give you a quick brief, you know, opinion on that, I take my Tacoma off-roading. I think the 4x4 system operates very nicely. I've used four high and low. I've used the locking rear differential, which you get with this one. And I've also used the crawl control, which you get with the off-road and the multi-terrain select. This thing is a tank in the snow. And yeah, you can just see all the space for heat management. Things are easy to get to and replace. Like if this hose starts to act up and get a little dry after a couple hundred thousand miles, getting to the radiator to pull it out and replace it after a few hundred thousand miles is easy to do. Lots of space for airflow, heat management. It's easy to add fluids when you're doing changes. I don't see things tucked away and covered by plastic like you see on a lot of the smaller cars and advanced 4x4s. This is simple and it's designed to go many, many miles. That's what I have to say. Let's get inside this awesome truck. We'll start it up. I want to start with the back seat. We'll talk about the space, which is a controversial topic on these four doors. And then we'll work our way to the front. So right before we go inside, this is your typical off-road setup. It's the double cab which is the four doors with the short bed, five and a half feet. You can get the double cab with the long bed, which is six and a half feet, which takes the back wheel and moves it further out for a very long driving truck. Or if you want to keep that long bed, you can sacrifice some space and get the access cab, which is an interesting combo, the access cab long bed, which keeps the same wheelbase. But we're in the typical example here. And for people that actually use the back seats, that's where we're going to go. The driver's seat is in a position for somebody that's about five foot 10 to six feet, depending on how much you like your knees bent. You're getting a one piece all weather floor mat back here. A nice two tone design with matching silver stitching. And you can actually feel the imprint of this fabric design here, which is pretty cool. So it's not as super basic as the SR5, but check out my SR5 video because the SR5 is an awesome truck that has a lot to offer without all the extras. Hard plastics down below. Nice little slot here with two bottle holders. It's a lot of hard plastics, but we have this basketball skin texture here, which is pretty easy on the arms and it helps prevent the arm from sticking when you're out there on a hot day resting your arm with a t-shirt on. Well, let's jump right in. So I'm going to hop up, keep my shoes clean. I'm going to close the door because it's 90 degrees out and I'm hot. Slightly stadium style seating. Right now I'm looking slightly over the driver's head in an upright position. And the catch is unlike the forerunner, I don't have a lever back here to pull up and recline that back seat. This is where it's at. I'd say it's at a four or 5% uh, recline. And that's all you're getting. So for my leaners, which I'm one of them, there's not a whole lot of leaning you can do. And unless you have a lot of heavy stuff in the back, you're gonna get a little bit of that hop on the long road trips. But 
My buddy and his wife were back here for a 10 hour ride to Tennessee. And though it got a little hoppy after five hours, um, of course we took breaks. They said it was good. They were happy, they liked the big windows. So you can see all the adventures you're going on. For knee room, we're talking three to four inches. So, you know, once I spread my knees out a little more and I set my arm down, my shoulder is coming up to about here. My eye level is about here. I'm chilling. I'd say about two, two to three hours, me personally, I'm ready to take a break. But you gotta remember, this is not a full-size truck. You know, this is a, a possible starter family truck, but if you have four adults that are around that six foot height, it's gonna be a squeeze and I've seen it done, but it's definitely gonna be a squeeze. I'll be very upfront about it. Two cup holders for my rear passengers and I do not have a flip down armrest like its sister, the Forerunner. There's no flip down armrest. I'm just kind of hanging out here and my arms just kind of chilling. Not a big deal. I don't personally spend a lot of time. The whole idea behind it is you have the seats when you need them. You have a couple kids, a couple teenagers, they're fine. You know, kids and teenagers typically are not into the amenities as much as the adults. You know, if you, if you need more amenities, you might have to start looking at Tundra or sacrifice that bed and get into the Forerunner or just look at getting into that Limited. There is no separate ventilation back here. I will discuss that on my review video, but if there was one thing I wish I had, it would have been a back vent because the Tundra has that and the Forerunner has that and it's awesome. But these four big round AC vents, which you can probably hear in the video, I'll say they're sending back the air, which is nice. One storage pocket, like a kangaroo. I got my, uh, my cleats are in here actually. None back here. Kind of weird why they would do that, but not a big thing for me. I'm gonna jump back out so I can show you the actual storage under the seats. This is an electronic sliding back window, which there's a button for right there, which we will get into momentarily. I know you're all excited to see the cockpit. Well, let me step out real quick. Just by grabbing the back seat and pulling up, the cushion will come up and now you have access to the slide lock storage, which is just past the wrist. It's not super deep. It's about as deep as my hand. But I got jumper cables in here, fuses, microfiber towels, a little thing of dot three, four brake fluid. Some emergency gear is cool. You can also hide your buckles down here or there are pockets for the buckles, you can stick them in there if you want to keep the cushion up and put those away, but they're coming from the factory with the buckles tucked. When you put the headrest up, which is a little tough, there it is, to do right out of the factory, it does fold down and you could get away with it coming down like this, but the whole idea was not to do that. This is just designed to keep it down so you can see a little better out here. You would actually remove this and these two metal prongs you would put in these two holes which will allow you to fold that seat down flush. And you have a hard plastic here and a cubby for more storage, which is where I keep some washer fluid, tire iron, a couple other emergency gear items, first aid kit, etc. And that seat belt, if you're not using it, buckles in just like that, which is nice. Fun fact about Tacomas, I wonder if I'm the first to mention it, you have a 70 pound, that's right guys, I looked, a 70 pound hook. Don't put 71 pounds, but that is a hook for groceries. 70 pounds only, according to Toyota. That clips back in, this comes down, and if you watch my Tacoma review video from last year, I actually had both sides down and a whole bunch of fishing gear, and it's nice, because you don't have to worry about getting these nice seats all dirty and nasty, because that gray will show stuff. Let's go on to the other side. For those interested, here's our window sticker. That's for the base. If you get the packages, they'll be listed right here. Honestly, I like the packages, but it depends on what you like. 
Now we get the longer storage here, which is partially taken up by your jack and your tools. Interesting thing, this is here, which is a little awkward, Toyota. If you ever see my tiny little YouTube channel, please consider taking this guy and moving him over here. But by the time that happens, these will probably be on the TNGA frame. If you don't know what TNGA is, check out the Tundra video because it's a whole new frame system that they're on with no leaf springs in the back. So yeah, here's that hard plastic and a longer cubby. If you get the limited or you get the premium packages with the JBL subwoofer, this is gonna be your JBL subwoofer, so you're gonna lose the storage. But check me out, another 70 pound grocery hook for a total of 140 pounds of groceries, guys. Take advantage of the benefits. And that's our back seats. With the experience I've had in this truck, I think they're fine. Like I said, I would have liked to have a vent back here, but not a big deal. You know, with a truck like this, you're getting a lot of other things for your money. Being the co-pilot of a Tacoma looks like this. Same exact door as you get in the back. So in a lot of models around the world, you'll see things get a little better as you get to the front, but on the Tacoma, they just kept it hard, durable plastics, simple basketball skin. Nice little sparkly gray here that matches the grill on the outside. And Toyota's moved on from the silver lettering on the uh, floor mats to black, which makes sense because the silver lettering was getting gunky after the first few months of ownership. This is gonna look good all the time. And another thing they did, instead of this section being just a flap, they created a wall. So there's a wall here, which is an issue I had on my 2021. You now have a wall here, so that water is gonna have a true stopping point. Whereas for 2021s and older, these were kind of flat and sometimes the water upon acceleration would start doing this. And we don't want water getting on the carpet or any of the metals here. So that's cool that they're adding these little details. So, you know, you can enjoy those factory mats. They kept the cells the same, which traps water and gravel nicely, but water will eventually get here, and it's nice that they added a higher border. Also, something that my truck didn't get from the factory, which is nice, is the door sill protectors, which are adhesed on there. And let me tell you, passengers step on this metal door sill all the time, and this protects it from scratching and eventually rusting, which is so sad to see. And I also like that the floor mat is locking on the passenger side, so it's not sliding all over the place like happens in a lot of other cars. So I'm gonna recline a notch, turn this down so you can hear me. Actually, my feet are hot now, guys. Here we go. So this is the locking glove box with Tacoma engraved. Pretty cool. There are some great aftermarket options for doing different shelves in here. I went on Amazon and got the Staggered T. So I have my books, some gloves, air fresheners, and other knickknacks in here. Pro tip, get a Swiffer and keep it in here because you'll always want to do some Swiffer on these because you don't want to scratch them up with a towel. Once this little guy gets scratched up, it's ugly. And that's the most scratchable lenses right there, which we'll, uh, we'll go on that side in a minute. Easy access to the cabin air filter. Big glove box. A little less storage in the front doors than the back doors. You have less of this sliding, uh, not sliding, this tray here. The center armrest here. It's soft enough. It's not plush. And we're about halfway up the forearm with still a USB and USB-C and a carpet. Little hole to run your charging wire. A pen clip, which holds the pens okay. You really gotta get a skinny uh, Bic pen. I use the V5s and, and those don't really fit in that great, but tissue holder would have been nice like the older Tundras, not a big deal. Also, some great aftermarket shelving options that you can pop on here and organize your stuff. Lift it up and the tray beneath, you can store some other things instead of just having a giant bucket. You can get that as a package with these. I don't get any kickbacks, but check those out little square holder 
with a cup and bottle holder and on the automatic transmission you got these cup holders here and this if you go manual transmission your shifters down here so you lose the cup holders and you get it long ways this is not standard this is your tier d shift knob which was just put on this one from the factory the center part of your cup holders here will slide out so you can run things long ways say you're a, a truck driving lady and you have a clutch you can run it that way if you are using this for other stuff you can pop that back in and these adjust to different levels depending on how big your yeti is non-sliding tray here with the chi wireless charging works pretty good it's on the slow side but for the long trips it's great for when you just want to park your phone and not worry about it it's still plugged in apple carplay not wireless to me personally not a big deal but let's get back to the style very utilitarian big silver bezel that matches your grill and also the door inserts here so that's nice to see the matching as well as the bezels around here slight chrome trim here which i personally like because at nighttime it, it plays with the light very nicely chrome around the push starter button the all-wheel drive not the all-wheel drive the four x four and also your doors so when you're cruising around at night you'll see these little glitz of light playing with these little things but it's not enough to shoot the sun back at you and blind you during the day like some of the other vehicles the touchscreen is not as shiny as the older ones it's a little more matted here so when you have that sun bounce back it's not gonna hurt your eyes so that's nice that they moved on the screen's also a little bit bigger than the 2019 and 20s and these nice big vents are awesome super customizable and if there's nobody here you can just close these and you'll get even more air coming from here let's scale back a notch it's a simple design Toyota doesn't design trucks to have all the frills and the latest and the greatest because that's not what they're concerned about. They want to make it last a long time. They, they research, they do what's right, and then they run it as long as they can. While everybody's worried about doing the latest thing and risking it not working right over the long term, Toyota does it right, and then they're researching until they make their moves. That's a culture that we see. It's called Kaizen. Continuously getting better over time, but they really wait until they know And up here, which we'll jump into in just a couple minutes, we have that multi-train select with the crawl control. Here's the button for the locking rear differential, which you will not get with the SR5 or the Sport. Here's my eye level as a co-pilot. You don't get any of the tint here like on some of the cars. This is all clear, so when the sun's up there, you will definitely take advantage of these giant sun visors because there's, there's no dark blue tint here to help you out. And another nice thing about the TRDs versus the SR5 is all black upholstery instead of the gray. So it really gives it a sporty edge. I like the black. You know, it adds a lot of pop and contrast to the window and it keeps your eyes wandering out the windows instead of gray. Not a big fan of gray all over the place. I like it here, but I love that Toyota did black and they're still doing black. It's awesome. And you can really tell you're in a TRD trim because you got the black fabric as well as on here. And it's a fogged out frosted plastic here so the light's not blinding you when you look in the mirror these are the little details that i love and speaking of details that we love the most important details are right next to us so let's go into the cockpit okay so here's what it looks like getting into a 2022 toyota tacoma trd off-road Electronic seat for the driver with lumbar support. Same locking floor mat here. Finally height adjustable for a couple years. The older Tacomas in this generation didn't even have a height adjustment and they were all manual. So finally some standard stuff, basic and simple. Let's get in right away. Now at the stock height on this truck, it's easy to get in and out. I just tend to hop in on my butt and then tap my feet before I get in with my feet. If you're getting in with your feet right away and you're not worried about tapping them, super easy around five foot 10, I'd say five foot eight, you're gonna probably wanna get some type of a step. Anything under five foot eight, you're, you're jumping, but it's all good. Good visibility, 
I suspect when they go TNGA, Toyota New Global Architecture, the whole new frames, there's going to be some type of a uh, mirror on the door here with more visibility here. Personally, it's not a big deal to me because I can just turn my head and see. You don't have to move a whole lot. But you know, people who might be used to cars, a lot of the new cars have a window here. So yes, you're gonna have to move around a little bit. But other than that, the visibility is great. Big mirrors on the doors. If you adjust the mirrors properly, so let me show you what I mean by properly. When I look at the mirror, you just want a little bit of that body line here. The blind spot kind of disappears. And with that advanced technology package, you will have the blind spot monitor. This one doesn't have it. It helps, but really the blind spot's not that bad. I can see fine here. If I look out this way, I mean, really that's right by my face right here. If I really check my shoulder, Let's be real, there's not really a blind spot. Say I don't want to turn around when I adjust the mirrors to the right spot. I mean, where's the blind spot, honestly? You know, just do a quick check, done. That's just me. Classic old truck steering wheel. The new Tundra has a different steering wheel. I'm used to this, the 4Runner has it with a darker plastic here on the TRDs, the SR5 has it. The uh, V8 Tundras have this. I'm used to it. I know these buttons. I've pushed these buttons so many times. It just feels and looks like a Toyota. Leather wrapped by hand. It's the last thing they do on these vehicles before they come from the factory. Full phone call controls here, volume, radios, voice commands. I can operate my little helper screen right here and go through some different menus. If you have the advanced technology package there will be a separate menu here where you can actually have a compass and you'll also have in-house navigation right here with the premium package which is the separate package so that's the second out of two you get the leather interior that's heated so you have heated buttons here and you'll have the moonroof and the jbl sound system with that subwoofer in the back the advanced technology package is what's going to get you that blind spot monitor possibly packaged with the led headlights and navigation but check the brochure, which will be included in the link in the description or in the comments. Always check my description and comments because I put some useful links. You'll hear me say it plenty of times. Utilitarian design. Very utilitarian. And funny you say that. I'm wearing an old school styled utilitarian cheap Timex here. Awesome war inspired watch. Similar spirit here. Round dials with a very tactile feel. Each click is a temperature notch I can wear gloves and I can operate this vehicle dual zone temp or I can sync it and control it from the left simple buttons no fancy weird symbols there's not a big learning curve on this truck nice to have the defrosting side mirrors My electronic rear window here open close USB wireless charging in my 12 volt It's simple, it's gonna last forever. And what I like, and I wanna know what you think, cause you're watching it. What do you think about having still dedicated buttons for the climate control versus putting them in the screen? Do you, do you want Toyota to put them in the screen here and have just a tablet? Or do you like having tangible buttons? Me personally, I love having my tangible buttons because if the screen takes an extra second to load on a negative 15 degree day, I can start adjusting stuff right away. That's just me. And there's full control to the bed light here. So if you get that aftermarket bed light kit that I told you, you can turn it on and leave it on, do it with the door or keep it off. Got my auto high beams, simple lever here for the hood, and I can reset my tire pressure right there. The steering wheel is adjustable. It does telescope and raise and lower. I'm trying to keep the video as concise as I can, but I wanna break it down for you as well. Regular hand grip brake, I like this. When they go TNGA platform, this is gonna disappear and you're gonna have an automatically applying electronic parking brake. And release. And I can control the six gears like this, which is nice, but a cool feature that this truck has is that when your nose, when your attack angle is low enough, you're going down a hill and you're braking, the system senses and it downshifts one gear for you and your RPMs will go up a notch and it'll kind of help take some of the load off the brakes, which is nice. 
And just a quick little introduction to the screen. This is Toyota's uh, old now that there's the new interface with the Tundra. This is the soon to be previous interface, which to me is very easy and a lot better than the one before it. I can turn the screen off and listen to music while driving. I can turn it on like that. I can even customize my color theme. So say I want some red to match the sticker on the bed. Say I want to stay laid back. Say I'm a little on the uh, old side and I have a hard time seeing with all this black and I need it to be a little brighter. I can do that. I got the home screen to show me different information. I can access my phone right there or by hitting the phone button. Let's do the four x four and then finish up the video. Now, this is a sold unit. It's gonna be going home either later today or tomorrow. And I didn't sell it and I'm not going to drive it. So I'll talk about the way it drives real quick. On the daily driving, which I do, I have 20,000 miles on mine. Uh, it's soft. The Bilstein suspension handles the potholes amazingly. A little bit like a boat during the turns. The visibility is fine. The get up and go is okay. You know, I'd give it a B. It's not an A plus, it's not. And it wasn't designed to be. Um, I've loaded up the bed with stuff. It almost feels like there's nothing back there. This thing's a little workhorse. The Toyota's the underdog. But for daily driving and doing some adventures like kayaking, camping, maybe four wheelers, dirt bikes, mountain bikes, this is the one to get. It's simple, but um, where could it do better? Acceleration. I wish it downshifted a little earlier. You know, I wish when I gave it a little throttle, it instantly downshifted like the 4Runner. But we squeezed a few more miles per gallon out of it, like we discussed before. And braking is great. Uh, Off-roading is where this shines. I'm not a pro off-roader. I'm not Matt's recovery. I'm, I'm never going to be, and I don't want to destroy the truck. But for beginner or maybe even in the intermediate part of beginner off-roading. This can do some pretty gnarly rock crawling. It's great in the gravel. I've done the mud, I've done the snow, and with the Wranglers it comes with awesome. When my Wranglers run out, I'll probably get some KO2s, and that's about as far as I'm gonna take it. And the 4x4 system works great. You can just electronically turn it like that, and it'll click in while you're moving. And then to go to four low, I can just put it in a neutral, and then I push and turn, and I pick what gear I'm gonna go into, driver reverse. And now I'm in four low, and it's gonna turn off all those automated systems for me. It's as easy as that. And then when I'm ready to get out of four low, I just come to a stop, put it in neutral, twist and turn, give it a second, comes right out of four low, and then I just pick where I wanna go. So we say four high on the fly, which means you can change it while moving, and four low, take it slow, go slow, come to a stop to change. And when you're in four low, which we're gonna go back into, oh, give it a sec. Oh, I was going the wrong way. See, I wasn't even looking at it clockwise. Shows you that I don't go into four low that often. So now in four low, what I can do is I can choose my multi-train select and crawl control. So to make this easy on you guys, the crawl control is basically a low speed cruise control for off-roading, which means it's actually handling the acceleration and braking and you just steer. So when I hit crawl, the MID screen here is going to show me a couple different options and I'll use this guy to turn it and you'll see I can pick the speed here on the crawl control. So literally when I'm on a trail, it will maintain that low speed. So there's five different low speeds, super slow or, you know, a tiny bit more, a tiny bit more. Once I pick that, I let off of the brake and gas and it does it all for me. And you're gonna hear and feel like a that's the brake system doing mini brakes to really maintain that perfect speed, which is really cool if you wanna focus on steering and you don't wanna worry about burning out a clutch. Multi-turn select. I have to turn the crawl control off. There we go, and then I hit the MTS button and now I can pick my different terrain. So what I would do if I was you is pick your terrain first. Rock and dirt is my most common. Then I can hit the crawl control and I can pick my speed and I just let off the brake and it goes. Then I can just turn it off like that or it'll automatically turn off when I take it out of four low. See, and it's letting me know it's been deactivated. Let's go back into two wheel drive because it's a beautiful dry day out. You'll hear a little click, and we're out. And that was a quick little tutorial of your 4x4 on the off-road edition. 
So yeah, let me know what you think of that. For guys that have a lot of experience using that system, my more advanced off-roaders, if I'm lucky enough to have you guys watching this video, let me know what you think and how it's worked out for you. We all have different levels of expertise and interest, but there's nothing wrong with getting an off-road even though you don't intend on doing off-road. Say you just want something a little more rugged looking. Say you want something that's just a little more rugged feeling. You know, you got a lot of potholes in your town and you wanted to take them to the cheek and you like the style and you like the heritage. You know, you like Toyota's long living heritage of off-roading. It's worth the extra couple bucks. But thanks for watching guys. This was the 2022 Toyota Tacoma TRD Off-Road in the double cab short bed edition give it a like if you like the video if you made it this far thank you so much for watching and like i mentioned in the beginning i hope to bring more videos to you soon as we get more inventory please share with your friends and family consider subscribing if you like toyotas and you want to see some you know inside views of these new vehicles and i will catch you in the next one peace